Good afternoon. Um, welcome to this session of House Hunting with Isla Canella. Uh, my name is Liz Rowlinson. I'm a property journalist for Place in the Sun and UK newspapers. And I'm here with Miguel Martinez Marino. Um, hello, Miguel. Hi, Liz. How are you? I'm good. You? I'm very well, thank you. Now, um, there are a, lot, a lot of people might not have heard of Isla or Isla Canella. Um, so um, we're going to basically introduce this destination, talk about what you can buy there, the lifestyle, how to reach there, and really give uh, listeners and viewers a look at uh, some property tours. So, Miguel, um, tell us about the project. So Isla Canela is, uh, is a small natural island that is located just on the uh, border with uh, the Portuguese Algarve, which is separated by a river. Uh, which forms the natural border between Spain and Portugal. Um, the company is called also Isla Canela. Uh, we've been uh, developing here for over 30 years. It started with a few residential units, then a golf course was built in 1995, then six hotels came into the island, luxury hotels, a leisure marina, and so on and so on. That was the, uh, the startup of the uh, whole of the resort uh, in Canela. And as people will see from the video we're going to look at in a minute, it's a beautifully sort of uh, expansive, unspoiled area of coastline. And to clarify for people, it sits in the area of Andalusia in southern Spain, which is Ayamonte. And then there's a river and then there's the eastern Algarve. That's correct, isn't it? That's correct. Yes. We're just on the on the furthest southwest point of the coast, what they call the Costa de la Luz in Spain. The Costa de la Luz is very large. Start from Gibraltar all the way to where we are, to where the border of, uh, of with, with Portugal, and we are right at that end of the um, of the uh, Costa de la Luz. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's almost a, a Caribbean in Spain. You have fantastic white uh, sandy beaches um, with seven kilometers of sand wide. Uh, it's, it's just a fabulous place, really. It's na surrounded by nature reserve as well, so it's it's very unspoiled, more natural. The, the, it's not so well known that area of Spain for British buyers, is it? It is not. It's always been a very popular destination with uh, with the Spanish uh, uh, tourists. Uh, we have people coming from the north of Spain, Madrid, Seville, and the surrounding areas. We are only an hour and a half uh, an hour and a half from Seville, so it's very convenient for those people to come over to us. Um, but with the overseas markets, it's always been um, on off the radar, basically. Um, so the best airports to fly to? It will be Faro. We are because we are right next to the Algarve. Faro is only forty-five minutes from where we are. It's a direct motorway from Faro all the way to Isla Canela and then to the rest of Spain. Uh, I mean, across the international bridge that connects Spain and Portugal. Okay. Well, look. Let's uh, let's have a watch of the video and then we can talk some more about it. So Isla Canela is located on the Costa de la Luz in Spain. Uh, just on the border with the Portugal Salgarve. The nearest airport to us will be Faro in Portugal, approximately 45 minutes drive. From Faro, there is a direct motorway to Isla Canela, coming across the international bridge that connects Spain and Portugal. Once you arrive in Isla Canela, there are numerous activities that you can do. Seven kilometers of white sandy beaches, with a pedestrian promenade along the seafront. There are several bars, beach bars, restaurants, wood sport, leisure marina, and six luxury hotels on the beachfront. Some of them offering spa facilities open to the general public, as well as life entertainment. La Canela Marina currently offers 231 birds, with the possibility to extend to 600 birds in the future. There is a fantastic sailing school open all year round for uh, children and adults, and you can enjoy several water sports. You can take boat trips from here and charter fishing boats for the day if you want to. There are also several bars, restaurants and shops within the marina. Great. Um, it looks fantastic. So you mentioned 30 years, Miguel, but is because has that been being built for 30 years? 
company started the activities in the area um, just over 30 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. So they started building a few residential units. They've bought uh, the uh, old building land within within the island. Um, so uh, they, they started with the with the residential units, as we said. Then they moved on and built the golf course that was finished in 1995. And then they start building the hotels on the beachfront. They built five hotels on the beachfront and one on the golf course. And from there, they start developing the uh, rest of the residential units and, and complexes that we have in Isla today. And, and who tends to be, is it, is it very Spanish, the, 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 the visitors that, that go there? They are. Majority of the visitors, uh, they are Spanish. I would say that 70% are Spanish and 30% are other nationalities. Do the Portuguese come across the border? Oh, and, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a very, very popular place for Portugal, for uh, Portuguese tourists. I mean, I don't know why, because they've got more or less the same beaches, but they prefer to come to Spain. Uh, I think, you know, some things are cheaper in Spain because of the taxations and things like that, but they come over and they also like the culture and the foods. And we go over to Portugal. So we kind of, you know, crossing uh, the borders all the time between the Portuguese to Spain and us, vice versa. Yeah, you come across for a nice piece of uh, tapas lunch or something. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so talk about the property, what people can buy. Um, is there a range of prices? What Can you just give us a little overview before we look at the first um, example? Sure, yes. We, we've got several developments in, in Isla Canela at the moment. The two more predominant ones are two on the beachfront that are under construction at the moment. Uh, but we have properties in Isla Canela ranging from £97,000, uh, sorry, euros, for a one-bedroom apartment or 126,000 euros for a two-bedroom apartment uh, located about 1.5 kilometers from the beach. If you're looking at beachfront, we're looking at properties from 182,000 uh, euros for a two-bedroom apartment uh, with spectacular views of the sea. Um, and we have several choices. We also have a, a complex of semi-detached houses, uh, second line from the beach, uh, 345,000 euros. So there are several choices for the for whoever you know the international client here. And for ninety seven thousand um, euros, you'd struggle to find uh, you wouldn't find a, a one bed apartment on the Algarve for that. So it's no. very uh, it's more affordable than the area next door. Without a doubt. I mean, we have a lot of Portuguese clients that come and buy in Isla Canela. The people from Lisbon and and the north of Portugal, and they come and buy in Isla Canela. They want the beachfront. They want to be on the seafront. And in Portugal, they can't afford it, but they come to Isla Canela because it's a lot cheaper. From 182,000, you can have a frontline beach apartment, two bedrooms. Yes, the uh, the Algarve has, I know, gone up, gone up a lot in price of, of yes. lately. So, okay, well, shall we have a look at uh, the first project we're going to focus on today, uh, Los Flamencos. Um, tell us a little bit about this before we watch the video. Okay, so Los Flamencos is located on the seafront. Um, there are 102 units in the first phase, and they will be finishing June this year, uh, at the end of June. And there will be 53 other units on the second phase. We haven't got a release date for that yet, but we estimate to be after the summer. Um, so here we offer units from one to three bedrooms, uh, prices starting from 166,000 for a one bedroom and 181,000 for a two bedroom apartment all with very good sea views, all the terraces are quite substantial and they have frontal uh, glass verandas, so they maximize the views even when you're sitting down. What are you going to see in a minute? Okay, well, let's, um, let's have a look at the video now. Excellent. Hola, soy José Ramón Prol, director comercial de Isla Canela. Eh, me encuentro precisamente en el Paseo Marítimo de Isla Canela, en primera línea de playa, ...y quería presentaros nuestra urbanización Los Flamencos... ...que tengo justo detrás... ...es una urbanización en construcción como podéis ver... ...para entrega en este verano... ...y disponemos de viviendas de una a tres dormitorios... ...si os parece pasamos al piso piloto... ...que os quiero mostrar y os presento también... ...a nuestro departamento comercial. Como os decía, nos encontramos en el piso piloto de nuestra urbanización Los Flamencos. Es una de las viviendas más comunes en este residencial. Son dos dormitorios con dos baños, con amplios espacios, cocina integrada y una gran terraza. 
Os quiero presentar ahora a Manoli Castillo, que es nuestra jefa de ventas, para que os cuente un poco más en profundidad las características de esta organización. Gracias, José Ramón. Efectivamente, el residencial Los Flamencos lo tiene todo. Un residencial en una ubicación perfecta, con un precio realmente atractivo. Cuenta con unas zonas jardinadas, unas zonas privadas, pistas deportivas, pistas de pádel, de tenis, una pista multidisciplinar y también una zona de juego infantil. Dos piscinas, la de niño y adulto. La playa la tenemos a escasos 50 metros. Realmente un entorno privilegiado, con chiringuitos, una playa magnífica, puestas de sol incomparables. Realmente merece la pena venir a disfrutar. If you would like more information, please do not hesitate to contact us. So, so this is yeah. Clearly, uh, you get a, a bit more for your money. You, it's a bit of a uh, more of a prime project than the ninety-seven thousand uh, one beds that you referred to. Um, this is a. This is. I mean, what about rentals? Would you, would you, could you rent these out to help cover the costs of, of running them and buying them? Absolutely. I mean, especially the, the apartments on the seafront, mm -hmm. uh, they're very popular. In, in the high season, for example, one of a two bedroom apartment here could rent for easily between 900 and 1,000 euros per week. And it's always a shortage. Of, uh, of apartments during July and August here, because of obviously all the Spanish are coming down um, to, to this area. And what would the running costs be for if you're an owner of one of these properties per month? Yeah, year? a two bedroom apartment will be approximately between 80, 90 euros uh, uh, per month, more or less for the maintenance fees. Mm -hmm. And then you have the local council tax, which is approximately 500 uh, euros per, per year. Is relatively low in comparison to other areas. Sure. And what about do Dubai? I mean, it's a holiday place, uh, uh, effectively, isn't it? I mean, do most of your owners spend a, a few weeks there in the summer, and is it quieter in the winter, or do does anyone live there year round? Yeah, we, originally it was more of a holiday place. It's becoming more of a uh, half a year here and half a year in your country type of thing. Uh, so people come and spend, they rent their apartments during the summer months, to, so pays all the bills and everything else. Not all of them, but majority of people. Mm -hmm. And then during the winter, they come and spend the months here because we have fantastic uh, mild winters. Um, and that's, we're seeing that transition from being a holiday place to becoming more of a residential area for the winter, the winter months as well. So it's, it's becoming more active in the area. We, we saw quite a lot of families in, in the video there, and it's obviously a great place for, for, for children with lots of activities. What about other types of buyer? Do you get um, retirees? What, what has it got to suit sort of different types of uh, demographic or age group? Well, obviously the beaches are always a plus, uh, whichever place you go in Spain. Uh, but here, the, the attractiveness, I think, not only for the retired, but for, as you mentioned, the families, obviously they enjoy the beaches and so on and and all the activities are in the area but for people that come and spend longer periods of time here attractiveness is that you have the Algarve right next to you so you have two countries to explore two different cultures you have Seville one hour and 20 minutes uh, from from where we are a beautiful city so there's a lot to do in the area for them as well and the town of Ayamonte is one of the prettiest Andalusian towns uh, at the it's active all year round, it's very busy, it's a, a working town, it's fishing industry is very prominent here. And people, you know, it's, it's got a lot to do in, in, in this area. Okay, and when is the whole project going to be finished? Well, as a whole, 
we still have quite a few years to go because right. uh, it's, it's still a lot it's, it's still a lot of land to be developed in there i think we are uh, reaching around i don't know between 40 to 50 percent maybe of the capacity of the whole island uh, so it's still quite a quite a lot to do in there and presumably as it develops and becomes more popular that'll help uh, values one would would hope if of people who've bought earlier on in the process Absolutely. Prices have been going up here for the last five, six years, uh, uh, you know, steadily. So, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's a good investment on the long term. OK, well, look, let's have a look at another project, which I think is going higher up uh, uh, the the exclusive level of um, of the offerings. It's called Ocean Homes. Tell us about this, uh, Miguel. Yeah, Ocean Homes is our flagship. Um, development in, in Isla Canela. It's under our uh, Isla Canela Excellence line, which builds only high quality, high quality product, not only in Isla Canela, but in the rest of Spain, where the, the companies have other activities as well. And uh, Ocean Homes offers 129 apartments divided into three blocks, you know, frontline beach with frontal sea views, um, two, three and four bedroom apartments, starting from 240,000 euros for a two bedroom, 97 square meters built plus 30 square meters of terrace, which is a substantial apartment for that, for that price. We just released the first and second phase here, they're already finished and ready to occupy. It. And we just released the third phase, which is the last 38 apartments, all with Southwest orientation and frontal sea view. Fantastic product. Okay, well, let's take a look now. Soy José Ramón Prol, director comercial de Isla Canela y me encuentro en una de las terrazas de nuestro residencial más exclusivo, Ocean's Homes. En él podremos encontrar apartamentos de dos y tres dormitorios con grandísimas terrazas, áticos. Tenemos apartamentos tanto llave en mano como en construcción para entrega el verano del año que viene. A continuación, si os parece, vamos a pasar al piso piloto. Os presento a parte de nuestro departamento comercial y conocéis un poquito más en profundidad el proyecto. Efectivamente nos encontramos en Ocean Homes, una organización en la que disponemos de apartamentos de 2, 3 y 4 dormitorios, todos ellos caracterizados por tener amplias estancias como vemos en este dormitorio, que dispone de un cuarto de baño luminoso, salida a la terraza y unas vistas amplísimas y directamente al mar. Encuentro en la zona de urbanización de Ocean Homes. En ella podemos encontrar, está la mina de agua que estáis viendo, la piscina y en esa zona central se encuentra el pool bar y además tenemos pista de pádel y gimnasio. Si te gustaría más like información, por favor, no hesitate to contact us. These are these are, these are great apartments. Do they? Um, they don't come furnished, do they? No, furniture is is separate. We will put you in touch with local firms that can uh, provide you with with furniture. Um, it depends on your budget. I mean, you could furnish a two bedroom apartment here from about seven to ten thousand euros, uh, but obviously, everything. So. Do, do, so you don't really offer what you call furniture packages. You you basically have companies that you you can link yes. the, the owners up with yes i mean we we ultimately are property developers so yes. we build we build and sell 
um, uh, the, the, we offer these services as well, obviously, because we are there in the area and we've got connections with lots of different companies, whether it's for uh, lights or, 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 you know, whatever you need and put you in touch with people. And, and, and as far as managing the, um, the rentals, if you rent your property out, is there a separate company who does that all together or would people rent them out separately, independently? How does that work? It's a bit of everything. Uh, some people prefer to do it on their own through the different portals, uh, but there are several uh, management companies within, within the area that, uh, again, uh, we will put you in touch with them and, and you can you know, deal with them on whatever you want to do with your apartment. Okay, and what about the um, what about the running costs on these pro properties? These are a little bit more expensive than Los Flamencos, but then uh, the apartments are larger. So the larger the apartment, the more expenses that it carries. Uh, here also it has more facilities within the complex. Well, here you've got it's approximately 110 euros per month uh, running costs uh, mm -hmm. maintenance, and the uh, local council tax is about the same, about well, between 500 600 euros per year uh, but here you've got uh, a, a gym for the use of the residents uh, of ocean homes uh, courts you have paddle tennis courts and so it's, it's more more uh, uh, services within the actual complex so you, you have to pay a little premium for, for that for, really yeah there's a lot on offer um and what about uh mortgages can you get, would British buyers be able to get a mortgage for one of the properties that's already built? Absolutely. I mean, we work with uh, some uh, mortgage uh, companies in, in Spain. Amongst them, we just uh, had a deal uh, with uh, a bank called Ola Bank, which is part of the Caixa Bank, one of the major Spanish banks. And Ola Bank offers up to 70% uh, finance for all our properties. And you can actually open your bank account online without having to come to Spain, which is a very good thing. I'd heard that, that Brexit has slightly affected the um, ability of British people to get mortgages in quite a few of the EU countries. Um, has that affected the loan to value a bit? Um, I think maybe a year ago, or, or not, not a year ago, but since the transitional period and things like that, banks have taken a little bit more of a conservative approach. Um, and they were lending maybe up to about 60% comfortably. But I think things are opening up a little bit more. And uh, the initiatives like, for example, uh, Ola Bank, uh, that they, uh, we had a meeting with them a few days ago and they said up to 70%, no problem at all, providing or subject to stay. But So I think other banks will follow suit and there will be more facilities available for mortgages for overseas clients. Okay, doke. So, if uh, do you do you organise viewing trips for British people who might want to come out when they're allowed to? Yes, we do. I mean, we don't actually pay for the trips. Um, mm. We will pick you up at the at the airport in Faro, uh, free of charge. We work with a transfer company, um, so we'll send the, the, the transfer company to pick you up at Faro Airport. We'll bring you to Isla Canela. You can stay in our golf hotel for two or three nights. We'll give you a super duper discount on the uh, on the rates. I think it's approximately 70 euros for the room per night for two people, including breakfast time. Um, one of our uh, representatives will pick you up at the hotel, we'll show you the area, we'll show you the apartments, we'll take you on a boat tour around the island so you can see the, the, the island from the sea as well, weather permitting that is. And so it, we provide a very comprehensive service for clients that arrives uh, in, in Isla Canela. That sounds great, and uh, and I think people often feel um, if they if if everything isn't paid for, they feel a certain sense of freedom, less under less pressure to to sort of um, uh, to buy. It's not so sort of hard sell, if you know what I mean. Yes, I mean we're not here to compete with anyone. We've got several agents that sell our properties as well, so we have to respect their, their you know what they do for us, and and so. Uh, we try to provide the best service we can, and we try to make the client feel as, com as comfortable as, as we can without pressurizing. Mm. And we must, you know, we must address uh, COVID because um, it's uh, people might watch this video uh, a few months later. But I mean, how has the if people are going to go out later this summer, hopefully, or the autumn? I mean, at the moment, um, it's it's opening up. Uh, people can. Is it is it okay for people to visit? 
Yes, uh, as we know, we're still not on the on that green light list, but uh, hopefully we'll be there soon. But yes, people is is I mean, we're open for visits um, uh, seven days a week, really. So yes. Okay, and what about Brexit in terms of? Do you feel buyers? You mentioned that some people might want to spend longer periods there. Um, how how are they asking about that? Would that impact many many of your buyers? Not really. I mean, we hardly have hardly noticed the, the Brexit transition to with with regards to buyers. I mean, those people that had their mindset of coming to the sun and buy a property in the sun, they're still doing so. Um, so no. I mean, we have question, you know, and obviously, yes, if you want to spend longer than 90 days in Spain, you'll have to get either a non-lucrative visa or apply for residency, whichever one uh, you decide to do, that you're working on or working on whatever. But it hasn't been an issue so far. I mean, we've been selling probably more now than we did before Brexit. So it's been quite good. Yeah, well, I guess if most British people are buying as a whole, I mean, 90 days in, in every 180 is is enough for many people, isn't it? Yes, no, that's right. It's more than enough. Okie doke. So what about the, if, if, what, what's the time frame? If, um, if, if somebody comes out this summer, um, how long would the purchase process take? Um, when might they be able to come and it depends what they buy but when might they be able to use uh, a property so for example if you buy something in, in los flamencos which is ready for completion at the end of june this year uh, we will be signing the title deeds in july so you will be able to use your apartment in the month of august really, at the end of july beginning of august. so the whole process from completion until the signing of the title deeds we have to wait for the local authorities obviously to check give us the uh, first occupancy license. Once we have that, we can start the, the, the site for it. It takes a process of, uh, the process takes about four weeks, five weeks. Okay, now the, the prices that you've quoted, for instance, um, like say take the 97,000 euros. I mean, what would the VAT or purchase tax be on top of that? So you'll be looking at approximately 13% above the purchase price. 10% is the VAT. And the other three three percent is is made of the notary fees, land registries, stamp duty. Okay. And what what do you think uh, is the uh, the main reason that that, that people uh, might not buy on on the project? Is it because they just um, I mean they might not know about it for a start because of the the we've talked about the region, but I mean what what's what's not to like about it really? Well, there's nothing not nothing not to like here. I mean, we've got the best beaches. We've got uh, it's, it's it's traditional Spain. It depends what you're looking for. I mean, some people they prefer to be in places like Marbella or Alicante, with where it's you know lots of activity and lots of people about. But here's a more relaxed uh, kind of uh, atmosphere. Uh, it's not dead by all means, as I said to you. I mean, you can see on the videos there's always lots of people about. But um, it's, it's, it's a different lifestyle, I suppose. I mean, if you want activity and you want the, the uh, water parks and you want that kind of thing, you will probably go to other areas. Here, we don't have water parks. Uh, we, we don't have, we don't have um, English pubs either, or fish and chips. We have fish and chips, but a Spanish version of it. So it's a bit more relaxed, a bit more Spanish, you know, traditional, uh, feel area um, so it's is that kind of lifestyle not like the rest of the costa space yeah it's it's not like the costa del sol at all uh, it's clear from that video isn't it well uh, i mean from marbella i can tell you there's nothing like it. so it's <laughs> it's completely different yes i mean the beaches are not overcrowded even in the in the height of the summer you can still go down to the beach with your parasol plant your parasol and you'll be on your own for the rest of the day so there are congregations, obviously, in different parts of the beach, where the, you know, we, where the water sports areas are and things like that. There's always more people about. But you walk a few hundred meters down, you know, on the beach on the promenade, and you can see empty. And then you just go up there for the rest of the day, really. Mm. And what, what are the British buyers that have uh, bought there so far? I mean, what sort of, what sort of, uh, why do you think? Uh, what have they loved? What have they said to you that they love about it? They love the feel of the area. Uh, apart from the, the beaches that are magnificent, they love the feel of the area and the feel of 
not being overcrowded. They have, you know, they can just go to the town of Ayamonte and although it's busy in the summer months and things like that, the rest of the year is, is a working town and it's busy but not overcrowded, you know, and it's got a fantastic array of, of uh, tapas bars, restaurants, shops, beautiful pedestrian town centre. And this town is literally five minutes from where the apartments are. So you, you either you, you catch a bus just outside the apartment to take you up to the town and the bus will take you about, I don't know, minutes because it stops in temporary. But if you get your car, within five minutes you are in the town of Ayamonte. You have the golf course. We have two golf courses in Isla Canela. One in actually Isla Canela and another one about 10 minutes drive from where we are. Uh, so you have a lot of activities and things to do without being overcrowded. And that's what people always say. say I feel so, you know, open and liberated here. It's not like, you, you know, you're on top of everybody and things like that, especially in the summer months when you go down the beach. When I go and see my family in Marbella in August and I go down the beach, if you don't go before 11 o'clock, you have no chance of getting a spot right by the water, especially if you have children. Here you don't have that problem. And that's what people like. And, and of course, it's that uh, it's near Jerez, isn't it? You've got some wonderful places to explore. Um, that's sort of the, it's sherry country, isn't it? Is that... yeah, yeah, Jerez is, is actually it's about, what, about three hours from us. OK, because the reason why it's three hours is because we have a massive national park between us and Jerez and there's no road to the national park. But that's another attraction because they, they, they call the Doñana National Park and it's the largest nature reserve in Europe. They do safari tours through the park um, where you can see old wildlife. There's the Iberian lynx amongst other things in there, wild horses and so on. It's a beautiful place to go and visit. But you have to run the whole of the park to get to Jerez. But yes, within three hours you are in Jerez. And within one hour and 20 minutes you are in Seville. That's interesting because it what strikes me as it's so flat from that video. So just over, just around the corner, there's a great big, there's a big mountain range and yeah, um, that's right, uh, yeah. hiking if anyone wants a bit more sort of something a bit more rugged. Yes, yes. Just behind us, you have the the whole of the of the Sierra to explore and, and it's and it's absolutely beautiful. We have what they call the route of the castles, that you go from one little town to another to visit all these restored castles um, in 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 land in, in the mountains. It's a really beautiful area. It's such a fascinating area that we we really ought to get to know. You know, the British should should explore a bit more, shouldn't they? And this is yeah, a, well, of a, course. And also, the, this area has got a lot of history behind. Uh, if you if, if Christopher Columbus set sails to the Americas from here, uh -huh. just thirty minutes down the road in Palos de la Frontera, so it's full of history. There's a museum of the three boats that that uh, Christopher Columbus took to the Americas. Uh, where he lived during the last period before he left and all that stuff. So it's full of history that. You could see a sort of the Moorish um, uh, history of the area reflected in some of the architecture and the development there as well. Yes, obviously the whole of the south of Spain, we were conquered for hundreds of years by the Moors. Uh, and you, yes, inevitably you would see that all through the south of Spain. Yeah. Oh, well, I think it's been a, a very tempting for people to come and uh, book a trip when they can and, and come and see you. I think that's the most important thing is to get out and see it for yourself, isn't it, um, for the next steps? Yes, I think so. I think, you know, when you're looking for properties, I, I always say to people, before you make your decision, visit a few areas and make sure that that's where you want to be. And by all means, come and see us because you will be pleasantly surprised uh, of, of this area. And how, because, and, and you're based in the UK, Miguel, uh, so, I mean, this is the, uh, the British buyers have the, the, the advantage of having a very sort of um, uh, company that stretches, you know, you can talk to you in the UK and then um, go over to Spain. And um, how should they get in contact with you and, 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 you know, begin to have a conversation about the project? Yeah, but they can contact me by email, but my mobile is, is on 24-7, so anybody can call me at any time if they want information or anything. So I'm always available, basically. So yes, I, I'm here in the UK, I'm in sunny Surrey. So um, if anybody needs some information, just please get in touch. And any final um, tips for, for to leave people with on um, coming to see you or, or what to to take away about the project? Yeah, don't be too late, otherwise we will run out of properties on this first call. 
<laughs> Thanks very much, Miguel. Um, You're I welcome. hope that's been very useful, and um, there'll be some further resources um, that people can look look and watch those videos and and check out your website. What's your website address? It's three uh, w's dot islacanela dot es. Great. Well, look. Thanks very much, Miguel. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Bye bye.